and welcome back to On The Workbench. Today we're going to be doing a little bit more of some electronics uh, smart home wizardry. Uh, what we're going to be doing is building a sump pump monitor for our, my Insteon system. Uh, they don't actually make a sump pump monitor. So we got some parts here. So the first part here is the Insteon garage door kit. Uh, the only reason I got this is because it comes with the I.O. monitor. Uh, it's, got some, it's got an extra sensor with it, but I was able to get this for 39 bucks at Menards. And so I thought that was a pretty good deal. And it's actually cheaper than what I could get the module for without the garage door sensors with it. So, you know, save myself 10 or $15 on that. So we'll unbox that here in a moment. And then we also got ourselves a float sensor here. Take a look at that in a moment. So let's start with the Insteon garage door sensor. We open this up. What we get out of the box here is the IO sensor. And this actually comes pre-wired intended actually for use with a garage door. As you can see, there's an open and a closed sensor, presumably already wired in at the bottom of the device. And so, yep, we got our wires here. There's no ends on them, but we got our wires there. Okay, now in our other box, we've got some screws, very nicely presented. We've got uh, some double-sided tape. We've got some other mounting brackets here. Obviously, one part of this is going to need to uh, attach to the garage door. Another part of this would attach theoretically to uh, your rails or your track or your wall. And s All right, so now the other module that we got is a float switch. And I'll put a link to this on Amazon because this one was a little more expensive than what a lot of the other ones were. But this one came with a key accessory. And that is this mount here where I can mount this actually into my sump pit on my discharge pipe, which I thought was invaluable. It's got the zip ties that would go through here. It even came with the zip ties, kudos on that. This was, I wanna say about $15. And then on this, we've got, we've got our lead, our red and our white wire. And then we've got our float here that'll just go up and down. And so whenever this float goes up, That'll trigger our sensor and tell us that our sump pump is working. So we'll obviously set this appropriately. And so next step is to actually wire this up. So now we'll jump to how to wire this. So here's what that sensor looks like set up in the sump pit here. The white wire coming out of the pit here is the sensor right here coming up and out. And that goes up to an Insteon IO bridge link. That then is connected into my Insteon system, and that counts the number of times that that switch is activated, and then gives me a report in Home Assistant. So the question of how this is wired up, you can see I've got the red and the white wires from the sensor, and this is connected uh, to the ground and the S, or signal, port on this Insteon I.O. device. All right, so hopefully you can see over here the location of that sensor. I've had this in use now for about six or seven months before I'm making this little piece of the video. It's worked great. It's sitting actually below the height of the main activation sensor, which is a basement wa watchdog sensor. And so there's a little bit of a time between when it activates and when the main sump pump switch activates, but I think it's worked quite well. So that's the view from down in the pit. Here we are looking at my setup here in Home Assistant. In the upper left-hand corner, you can see the statistics that have been generated by the sump pump monitoring system I've got set up here. Today, there's been 119 activations. Yesterday, 179. Uh, this week's 1,604 and 2,407 this month so far. So that's on a, or that resets on the last day of the month. And so this is January 5th when I'm recording this. So this is 2,407 activations uh, within the first four and three quarter days in January. And so I can go through and I can look at and I can pull up exactly when it's activated, at which time of the day, how often. I got some other abilities in Home Assistant to be able to plot that. The functionality of Home Assistant is completely, you know, it's a topic for a whole nother video, but I've been able to successfully tie this into Home Assistant through Insteon. And then eventually I've got this home weather station here that I'll be talking about in another video that I want to be able to connect or be able to try to at least correlate the rainfall to sump pump activations just for my own amusement to be able to find a relationship between the two. But at the end of the day, what I want to show in this video here is you can then tie in the sump pump stats exactly to 
uh, to be able to show exactly what the, uh, how many activations have been going on. I can even query this to know how many activations over the lifetime since I set up the sensor. Just to give me some idea if it's been working, how dry it's been. This also acts as a proxy measurement for how wet the soil is outside because all this water is coming ultimately through the soil and into the sump basin, which gives me some indication of what's going on outside. So that's a look at the last mile of what I did with this by connecting this all the way through to Home Assistant. So if you found this video useful and interesting, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Check back here for more videos. I'll have another video about my home weather station here coming up before too long. And have a great day. Bye.